he was arrested for performing a ceremony that had been carried out for centuries. First Nation historian George Hunt faced the whim of Christian missionaries bent on civilizing BC's First Nations peoples. He was not a carver, as though many in his family were, but rather a recorder of Native life. Bruce Kirkpatrick now with This Week in History. The Hunt family writings and carvings are world-renowned, and their British Columbia coastal art is still regarded as some of the finest ever created. It was 114 years ago this week that George Hunt was arrested, along with a local boy, for performing a Hamatsa ceremony off northern Vancouver Island. Hamatsa is a secret native society that performs ceremonies and rituals. It's somewhat like the potlatch. The federal government outlawed in 1884 and became legal again in 1951. Hunt is just serving as an example of some of the many um, representatives of the Kwakwak peoples at that time that were faced with um, hard choices regarding their cultures. March 31st, 1778. Famous filmmaker Edward Curtis, who wrote many books as well on native traditions, was the first to create a feature film on West Coast First Nations life at the turn of the century. This is the type of life George Hunt and his young friend lived while facing trial in Nanaimo in a case that then moved to Vancouver. Hunt was found uh, not guilty and the young boy was sentenced to two months hard labor for what was was called ritualistic cannibalism. It was also um, referred to as, in the case, as unlawful ceremony. Cannibalism because he bit his arm. Yes, um, th that was the, the, the evidence. George Hunt's work formed a bridge between European and indigenous life when First Nations cultures were believed to be on the verge of extinction. For 45 years, he contributed stories, music, and native ceremonial details to anthropologist Franz Boas, who published his books worldwide. He was a researcher, a translator, um, and a collaborator. And so it is in the study of the Kwakwakwak peoples at the turn of the century that George Hunt should be best known for. Native carver Bill Reed said, it's time to start living like British Columbians and stop living like displaced Europeans. George Hunt's legacy lives on through his descendants who were well known for their totem poles and other carvings and for carrying on the cultures and traditions of George Hunt's peoples. He also is part of a lineage of, of Hunt's that have been um, almost thought of as a royal family in the artistic scene of, the, of First Nations on the West Coast. The Hamatsa secret ceremony still survives and parts of it were actually featured on stage at the World's Fair in Chicago in 1893. George Hunt passed away in Fort Rupert on northern Vancouver Island in 1933. This Week in History, brought to you by the Royal BC Museum, bringing British Columbia stories together.